Hello guys, welcome back again. So here in this session, I'm going to start account payable. Now the question is, what is account payable? What do you mean by account payable? So guys, if you're from a finance and account background, it will be quite easy for you guys to understand this, and you might be knowing this. What is account payable? You know, if you're from uh, you know non-finance and account background, then for you people uh, might be you know like it is. Uh, I cannot say unknown, but still you'll be having some. Uh, or to say question mark in your mind so i'll just give i'll explain this in a simplest uh, by giving some simple example so that you guys will be having perfect understanding and then we'll proceed further uh, for the configurations and testing part everything will be there and that too with detailed and exclusive explanations so we'll cover all those things one by one step by step let me start from this account payable definitions so guys if you talk about account payable now look at here if you're going to do google search so you'll be getting certain uh, definitions say for example here like an account payable is a liability for an amount owed to a creditor creditor means vendor for the purchase of goods and services these kind of definitions you are going to get from google uh, for some of you like uh, whoever from finance and account background is there as i told you will be able to understand uh, might be from uh, non-finance and account background people still will be having some confusions so uh, the simplest definition is account payable means what account payable means we have purchased goods on credit and we are yet to pay off the creditor right you are yet to pay yet to pay means the payment is not made yet it means in future you must have to make payment so whatever payments are still due whatever the due uh, payments are there let's suppose i'll tell you i have purchased a goods worth of thousand rupees from a particular vendor a okay this is vendor a from vendor b i have purchased goods worth of four thousand from vendor c i have purchased goods worth of six thousand right likewise we are having d let's suppose 2500 p again 4000 so likewise multiple vendors will be there multiple vendors will be there so now these all whatever like this this amount this much worth of goods we have purchased and payment is going to be made later because the procurement is happening on credit basis uh, i'll tell you guys one more thing here now here generally if you talk about as an individual if you have to purchase something or if i have to purchase something simply we are going to visit the market let's suppose you have to buy a laptop now you'll visit the market you are going to visit four or five shops and then you'll collect some quotations in the sense some small small pamphlets they are going to share you on that like all the details will be uh, there like this laptop uh, is like uh, having 4 gb ram uh, one tv hard disk is there window 10 pre-installed like operating system will be there multiple like functionality they have uh, you know there will be a specifying over there and final price also will be quoted apart from this certain discount also they'll be specifying that there is the price and on, on that we are offering 20 percent discount right so such kind of things will be there somebody might be they're going to uh, you know give some additional level to say this one like uh, let's suppose they'll say that one year plus extra two years warranty right somebody says that we are going to give some extra accessories along mouse will be there keyboard will be there right so such kind of offers will be given by people right so once uh, so what is happening guys four or five uh, options are there in your hand we are going to compare and then finally we are going to decide okay this is the best bargain for me this is the best uh what to say uh, option is for me and you are going to select the final one Finally, we are going to make payment and we are going to buy it. This is what the normal purchase process is there for an individual, right? If you talk about the same purchase which is happening between organization to organization, Tata Motor, let's suppose, is there and Dell Computer. Okay, so first of all, if Tata Motor required, uh, let's suppose Tata Motor is going to order the computers, doesn't mean that one computer or one, one laptop is going to be ordered. Let's suppose Tata Motor decided to provide laptop uh, for their employees they're going to order in bulk might be 5000 might be 10000 laptop is going to be ordered 
So they first of all before ordering, what is happening? First of all, they are going to contact like in market, like whoever the uh, you know vendors are there, suppliers are there, like Dell is there, Lenovo is there, H HP is there, HCL is there, right? Deloitte is there. Uh, so now, uh, sorry, uh, I quoted the wrong word to say this one. Not Deloitte, it's Dell. So now uh, Deloitte is a you know like a well known uh, what to say this audit companies and all which is the part of this big four so now multiple organizations are there sorry multiple uh, what do you say uh, options are there even sony is also there in this way so what is happening here is first of all they are going to invite quotations i'll explain these things once again in details uh, in the further classes case there will be a 5m integrations topic will be there there i'll explain so now what is happening they'll invite quotations from these all whatever four or five options are there in the sense this, this companies and they are going to compare the quotations and based on that they are going to decide that which one is the best option for them then finally they are going to place the order how they are going to place the order guys in that also certain processes there first of all purchase order is going to be raised PO is going to be raised it, it is going to be sent to the vendor then vendor is going to deliver the goods that is called goods receipt is going to be posted and vendor is going to send invoice also there is a logic guys here goods sending goods uh, you know and then sending invoices so goods are going to be recorded separately in the form of goods received invoice is going to be recorded separately in the form of invoice receipt that is going to be explained later so now this is what and then finally payment is going to take place in the sense finally payment is going to be made so payment is going to be made doesn't mean that immediately the payment is going to be made guys there will be certain time limit in the sense like might be after 30 days from the invoice or 45 days from the invoice because there will be a procedure right lots of approval is also required so whenever whenever any procurement is happening like organizations to organizations then the procurement or so-called purchase purchase or procurement both are same guys okay so any procurement any purchase is happening for that what is happening guys the terms of payment is going to be negotiated with the vendor that we are going to make payment after 30 days after 15 days after 45 days after 60 days these things are going to be negotiated it means organizations to organizations the payment or whatever this procurement is happening guys it is happening on credit basis it is happening on credit basis in the sense take take goods right now and make payment later right so let's suppose if Tata Motor has ordered a laptop worth of 1 million, 1 million, worth of 1 million, it could be anything, whatever your currency is there, whether it is uh, rupees or dollar or GBP or whatever other currencies. So, worth of 1 million, let's suppose, uh, the you know, computer or laptop has been ordered. So, whatever this 1 million amount is there, right, this is your payable. In future, you must have to pay after 30 days, after 45 days you are liable to pay this amount to the vendor right so this is why it is called it is your payable and in terms of accounting this one it is called account payable right and as you said you are liable to pay this amount to vendor in future so this is treated as your liability right if i explain account receivable there is again i'll quote some example i let you know account receivable is nothing but we can say vice versa so now what is happening guys so whatever these amounts are there these all are like this amount means what we have procured certain goods from vendor a on credit basis we have purchased certain goods worth of 4000 rupees from b likewise 6000 rupees from c so whatever these amounts are there guys this is your payable if somebody asks like what is the total payable look at here the total payable is 17500 it means this is what if if you have to like if you are going to prepare the financial statement in that what is happening this is what the total payable is going to be so that 17500 is the liability it means this much worth of payment we are supposed to make to the vendor in future so this is supposed to be paid to the vendor now so this is called account payable right that is what i have specified here right account payable means that we have purchased we have purchased goods from vendor on credit 
and we are yet to pay off the to the creditor we are yet to pay off the creditor it means purchase we have made right goods you have received from vendor you started doing your manufacturing right so of course you are going to sell it but what about the goods which you have procured from vendor vendor is going to send you invoice also worth of certain amount so that is supposed to be that amount must be paid might be after one month or 45 days or 60 days whatever the terms of payment is agreed it's okay but whatever that amount which is supposed to be paid that is going to be treated as payable and in accounting form it is called account payable okay so this is our liability it means in future you are liable to pay this amount to the vendor this is what i wanted to say in account payable guys now in a city what is happening so account payable means what is happening guys account payable means as i told you like there are certain process certain procedure to procure the goods and all right all together it is all together it is called p2p process procure to pay process you are starting from purchase order goods received invoice received payment that is going to be discussed in later going to be discussed later uh, in fi mm integration guys i explain it uh, but right now we are going to in account payable the basic account payable uh, we are like see this is called like p2p process means what guys starting from let's suppose purchase order purchase order means uh, first of all purchase order and then goods received and then invoice receipt is going to happen so invoice receipt means invoice is going to be posted by finance team account and finance team right so here right now uh, if you talk about the invoices two kind of invoices will be there one is called PO based invoices and second one is called non PO based invoices PO based invoices means first of all it is going to be started from here purchase order if let's suppose we have to purchase a raw material uh, uh, some 100 tons or 200 tons of uh, iron ore or like uh, anything coal or whatever it is raw materials are going to be procured so for that what is happening guys purchase order is going to be raised it is going to be sent to the vendor then based on that vendor is going to deliver you the material raw material right vendor is going to send you the invoices also so this is called like so whatever invoice we have received that is called po based invoice first of all you have sent purchase order to the vendor and based on that vendor has sell delivered you the goods along with the invoices this is called po based invoices so for that what is happening guys po based invoices means for that we are going to follow which process for that we are going to follow p2p process p2p process how to configure this p2p process guys there will be a separate session on this fim integrations which is very famous uh, you know and very important topic that i am going to explain in details in details means pretty exclusive explanations will be there guys uh, i'll try to make you people you know understand uh, by quoting uh, very simple small examples and also that it will be easy for you guys to understand i'll tell you guys now once again i'll uh, repeat here because see learning uh, sap doesn't mean that you simply you have to learn the configurations blindly no you need to understand the concepts concepts if, if you are able to understand then only you guys are going to become a consultant or else like if you keep on doing configurations by watching some videos or by you know uh, you know getting uh from like by seeing some tutorials and all if you keep on doing configurations and all I, I get multiple calls from people saying that i have already done account payable account receivable gl general ledger asset management i have learned all the configurations i say it is not possible to settle down your career as a consultant because you know how to configure but if if, if you go for interview people are going to ask why to configure so how is not important guys why is the everywhere in every organization configuration documents are there let's suppose uh, this account payable we are discussing about right account payable means of course we have to uh, configure here we have we have to uh, go for some basic configurations initially and multiple other topics also will come that is also going to be discussed one by one so here like of course i'll explain how to configure right but before that whatever configurations are there whatever configurations we are going to do you need to understand what is the use of this configuration if i'll configure let's suppose i says you have to create account group so the first question is what is this account group and what will happen if you are going to set up the account group what will happen if you don't set up the account group is it possible to proceed further without setting account group right multiple such kind of questions are going to be derived and if you guys are able to understand these things and all 
uh, then I think it's going to be quite easy for you to become a consultant because you know the logic. If you don't know the logic and all, simply you started learning how to set up company, company code, fiscal year variant, posting period variant, and if, if people have started asking questions, they will ask scenario-based question. They'll give you a scenario, and then they are expecting answer from you. So, guys, scenario-based question, uh, answer, you know, like scenario-based question, if somebody is going to ask, it means what will happen? First of all, you need to understand the question, and you can understand the question only. If you are having perfect understanding of that particular topic, right? So nothing is going to happen uh, without perfect knowledge. Uh, neither you will be able to clear the interview, and nor you will be able to survive. Also, survival is also most important, guys. Let's suppose somehow you got the placements. What will happen? What you are going to do once you become a consultant? People are going to give you a huge package. It's okay. You are very much happy. But if you are unable to perform within a uh, you know, few days itself, people are going to send you out of the organizations. Isn't it? So try to understand whatever the things are there, whatever the topics, whatever uh, you know, things are going to be explained by people. Uh, you just uh, uh, try to understand these things. Okay, so now, anyway, I'll, I'll come back on the topic because uh, I was just explaining here. So I was explaining about the PO and non PO based invoices, right? PO based invoices means PO based invoices means what guys first of all requirement is there to procure certain raw materials and all so for that we have raised a purchase order purchase order means what guys it will be having multiple details purchase order means like let's suppose uh, details about what like which material is required first thing what should be the quantity right when we are going to when what is our expected delivery date like okay this material we are expecting uh, the delivery of material up till so and so dates, right? Uh, like if the delivery is going to be sent to the vendor, so for which plant it has been ordered, for a particular plant, you'll be having multiple storage area, storage locations that is called, right? So to which storage locations this, this you know, uh, like raw material is going to be supplied by vendor. So multiple, these kind of details will be there in purchase order that is going to be raised and based on that, vendor is going to deliver you the goods. Right, and then along with that, invoice is also going to be given. So this invoice is going to be posted with the reference of purchase order. This invoice, whatever is sent by vendor, that is going to be posted with the reference of purchase order. That is called PO based invoices. Right. Now I'll tell you about the non PO non PO invoices. Non PO invoices means what, guys? Let's suppose uh, take example of like utility services. Right. If you talk about the utility services, what is happening, guys? In uh, utility services, say for example, uh, Tata Motor is there uh, consuming the electricity. So whichever the electricity board is there, that is also giving a kind of services, right? So every month into what is happening, guys, based on the consumption, they are going to send the invoices. Here, there is no purchase order, right? There is no purchase order from when uh, there is no purchase order raised uh, from Tata Motor, uh, you know, from Tata Motor side. Simply based on the consumptions, every month Tata Motor is going to re receive. Uh, the invoice from electricity board that this much amount is supposed to be paid because this much worth of electricity has been consumed. This is called non PO invoices. This is also a liability, guys. This is also we are supposed to make payment like after 20, uh, sorry, 15 days or 30 days, whatever the agreement is there between Tata Motor and electricity board, right? So, this is also, uh, so in this case, also we are receiving invoice, but without any purchase order. This is called non PO, non PO invoices. Say, for example, Tata Motor is taking, uh, you know, like uh, services from a telecom company. Say, for example, like BSNL is there, or else like Reliance Geo is there, or any other, uh, what do you say, telecom uh, company is there, which is giving like uh, this uh, services and all. So every month end, these people are also going to send the invoices, let's suppose, based on the consumptions, right? So now what is happening? There is no purchase order for this uh, services also. This now, uh, say for example, Tata Motor is using uh, internet. So internet also like a, a particular vendor is there who is giving services. For that also, they are going to send invoices based on the consumptions every month, right? So such kind of multiple examples are there, guys. So this is called this is called non-PO invoices. Okay, this is called non-PO invoices. So now here for PO-based invoices. P2P configuration supposed to be there. 
and that is going to be done during fi mm integrations that topic is going to be explained later in upcoming sessions right now i will show you like basic account payable configurations and then uh, how to force this non po invoices and based on that multiple other i want to say settings also is there guys in account payable that also we are going to discuss in detail uh, there will be quite exclusive explanations of uh, on those topics also i'll explain each and everything first of all why to do and then how to 